Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use parametric lights with NVIDIA iRay in Dash Studio 4.9. This is a video for Scott. Scott's a viewer of the channel. Hi, Scott. He was asking, could I put up a little video about iRay lighting? And I thought, hey, that's perfect timing because I had in my mind, I had prepared a little series about iRay and uh, the ins and outs and intricacies, and lighting was going to be one part of it. And I thought, this is perfect. Let's start with that. In fact, let's jump right into Dash Studio 4.9. In fact, let's have a check what version I'm using. I'm recording this video in April 2017 and I'm using version 4.9.3.166 if anyone's interested. I'm also using the Windows version 1703 on Windows 10 Pro, uh, the Windows Creators Update, I guess they called it. Now in my scene here, this is a, a brand new scene and I've got a Genesis 3 female figure in here. This is uh, one of 3D Universe's new characters. Well, when I say new, new at the time of recording. And um, this uh, scene has no lights in it at all. I'm currently looking at the texture shaded viewport here. And you probably know that you can also switch this over to the NVIDIA iRay viewport. And that means you can get a preview of your scene um, as it would look like as it was rendered in NVIDIA iRay. It takes a moment and uh, that studio thinks about it for a second. And uh, But as soon as it, it has done this first render pass, it's relatively quickly even if you move the figure around. And uh, lighting, well, there there's appears to be some kind of light in the scene already. And we're going to discuss the ins and outs of that in another video. Each scene comes with default lighting and uh, but there's nothing in the scene here so where does that come from well it comes from two places really uh, one is the image based lighting which we're talking about in another video and the other one we're going to talk about here is coming from the camera or from if you're looking through the perspective view through any of these cameras here and this is a headlamp phenomenon. And those two things, they're there by default. If you're looking through the perspective view, you cannot switch this off, the headlamp. But if you're looking through the camera, then under the parameters tab with the camera selected, you can switch the headlamp off. So currently it's an automatic mode. And what this does is basically it's a spotlight that's taped to your camera. So wherever your, your camera looks, there will be light. And um, that's a bit like the helmets that the miners use, uh, that they can, wherever they point their head, wherever they turn their head, that's where light shall shine. And that is the same phenomenon with the headlamp. So it, by default, when you create a new camera, it comes in with auto. And auto means uh, if there are no scene lights in it, then the headlamp will be used. And you can also set it to permanently on or to permanently off. So if we do that, if we set it to permanently off, then we can see that we still get lighting, we still get a shadow here, but the character is no longer illuminated as it was a moment ago. So we have, you know, more more dark shadows here. The light seems to come from this direction, and um, hence opposite the, the shadows, so that the shadows go this way, so the light comes from here. And we can see that in the character. So we can switch this back to auto or to on. Let's switch it to auto and uh, the headlamp comes back. But uh, notice that if I switch this off again and I head over to my look through my perspective view again, that headlamp phenomenon is switched on again. So I can't change that. So this is uh, made for when you're setting up your scene, you don't have light set up because that's usually the last thing that you're doing in a, in a scene. And um, you just want to make sure you see something because if we wouldn't have any light in the scene, we literally wouldn't see anything. And that's not so good either. And maybe I'll demonstrate how to do that in the second video about IBL. So right now, uh, let's let's set some parametric lights to make this thing look good. So uh, if we don't want to use the headlamp on the camera, in fact, let's look through the camera quickly. Headlamp mode is off. We don't want to uh, use the headlamp, so we're going to switch that off. And we will create uh, not a three-point lighting system. It's a little bit uh, difficult, perhaps, at the moment. We're just going to create two lights. And one will be coming from, from about here. 
and the other one is coming from the side to give the character a little edge. In a three-point lighting system, you'd also get a light from behind, and there's all kinds of intricate setups like a five-point and a seven-point lighting system. They're a little bit um, intricate, and we're not going to go into how to do that. So the easiest way that I know how to set a light is, well, first of all, maybe I will switch this back to texture shaded, only because uh, that means my computer is a little bit faster. And look, if I do that out of a sudden without the headlamp, I don't see anything. It's just a black silhouette here. But of course, with the IRA rendering engine, it adds the IBL, and that's why we're seeing the character. But um, the uh, the preview, the OpenGL preview here in the texture shaded viewport, that uh, does not provide any lights. Unless, of course, we look through the perspective view again. Anyway. So one light I'm going to position from about here and the perspective view is kind of good for for doing that because if you now head over to create new spotlight then you have the option to say apply the active viewport transforms from the perspective view. You can also name the spotlight something I'll just leave it at spotlight one and hit accept. So that creates a spotlight here and I now also have the option to look through the spotlight to position it properly. Now that's going to be cool. I'll do that and I can either zoom in uh, more so that illuminates less of her body or I can zoom out more and that will illuminate more of her body. Like in my case I want to, I want to do something like maybe like this and the angle I think is, uh, is going to be all right. Now the OpenGL is trying to give you a little preview of what the lights are going to look like. They're not going to look anything like it. Uh, and this, the parametric lights aren't 100% implemented in iRay, but the spotlights work uh, quite well. So there's these other things here that we know from 3D light, the distant light, point light, and the linear point light. And those I haven't made much... Uh, I didn't have much success with so the spotlight really works well but the distant light point light and linear point light they they bring me no joy at all so we're going to stick with the spotlight for now but feel free to experiment maybe you have better luck than I have now the key to making this light work under iRay is first of all we need to be in the iRay rendering engine that's under render settings um, and I'll show you why in a moment if you select that spotlight that we've just added here and head over to the parameters tab there you can see under the light tab you have two things area and photometrics and um, we need to change some of these options to make this light work under iRay but it's really easy and once, once you've done it a few times you go ah this is really second nature to me so under area uh, under light geometry let's change this from point to rectangle and then we can give it a height and a width diameter here. Uh, this is, think of this as the dimensions of the photographer's softbox. And um, in iRay or on an unbiased rendering engine, the size of the light doesn't change the amount of light output it has. So if I make this 10 times bigger, that doesn't mean it'll be 10 times brighter. It means that the shadows are softer. So if I leave it at 10, the shadows will be relatively harsh. I will be able to see shadows. But if I change this to 100, then again, that doesn't mean the light is more diffused. It's just that the, that the shadows are softer when, uh, when it, when it comes out. And that's one thing that we can change here. Uh, light portal and two-sided we don't need to worry about one thing that is of interest is the render emitter that is something that other unbiased render engines don't have it's uh, you can you can switch the actual lamp off uh, in case you position a camera so that it catches the um, this this light that we've created you may just if you're behind that light uh, your camera just sees black and that's that's not good so if you don't want to see that you can just switch that off the render emitter i'll leave it on for now i'll see what happens maybe we we will catch it and i can demonstrate the effect then now the next thing I'm going to change under photometrics here is the luminous flux in lumen. It's set to 1500 by default, which is way too low and we won't let us see the effects of that light at all. Let's change this to about 50,000. And that is the actual 
brightness of the light. So if you want to make it brighter, then you know set this higher. If you want to make it less bright, set this number lower. But 50,000 is a good good starting point. Temperature we can leave as it is for now, or we can set it to low or higher. A lower value than 6,500 means the light is going to be more orange. Something of temperature higher than 6,500 means the light is going to be a little bit bluer. But we're going to leave this for now. Let's position the second uh, spotlight. Going back to the perspective view, I just tumble around the character and I'm just going to have it from almost from her side, not quite from here, but perhaps from about here, I guess. And just like before, we're going to head over to create a new spotlight. Apply the active viewform transforms perspective view. And there's our second spotlight. With it selected, we need to do almost the same thing as before. So the shadows we can leave at 10 and 10. We just need to change the light geometry to rectangle again. So this now gives us a slightly harsher shadow, but that's fine because it's kind of a just an edge light. And in the photometrics, I'd say the luminous flux here shall be 30,000. And we'll just see what that comes up with. So if we head over back to our camera, Just checking if the headlamp is off indeed. That's perfect. And let's uh, let's do a render, see what happens. There is actually, there's something, I'm just mentioning that here. I'm going to mention that in another video again as well. If the viewport is set to the texture shaded, then I personally call this a cold render. So iRay has to do this first render that usually takes a little bit of time uh, every time you click render, it's like like right now, this is taking a bit of time before anything uh, render-wise really happens. Now, it used to be that when this viewport was set to NVIDIA iRay and you did a render, that that was that put a real strain on the engine, and it uh, it meant this render would actually take longer to complete because the engine was not very intelligent and it was kind of rendering the viewport as well as the real render. And uh, luckily they've changed that around, that if you have set this viewport to NVIDIA iRay and then you start a render, I call that a hot render, then this first render pass that takes a bit of time has already been done. And the good news is that then the render will start more or less immediately and, and will, will take less than half the time it took, it took right now. Well, we'll demonstrate that in, uh, in the next render. So there we go. This is the this is the kind of lighting effect that these two um, spotlights did. It almost did the same as the camera headlamp, but we have more intricate shadows here. We can of course control the softness of the shadows and the harshness of the shadows, and uh, we can control where light is coming from. So if that is not quite enough for me, then I can increase the light that comes from the main spotlight here. Maybe I will do that. Let me just. Uh, uh, close that down and in fact I'll set this to NVIDIA Iris so I can demonstrate you um, what I've just explained. I'll select the first spotlight, head over to light and under photometrics I'm gonna say perhaps 80,000. Perhaps I'm also gonna make it slightly more orange to demonstrate that. Perhaps I'll set that to 5,000. That'll be kind of very orange I guess. And I'll just wait until this first render pass has happened here. And we should actually see this uh, this phenomenon in in, uh, in the viewport already. There, so that's more light, but it's it's barely noticeable. I've increased it by thirty thousand, and it's barely noticeable. So to to really overexpose the image, if we if we wish. Uh, there is well we could do it with tone mapping that's under render settings but I'll dedicate another whole video to that uh, let us have a look at the luminous flux first and set it to 200,000 now we get to see the effect so this is now four times higher than the original and it's maybe twice as bright uh, so that I guess that's a, that's a rule that, that we've got there. If you um, increase this by four, then this kind of doubles the um, the amount of um, the amount of brightness you get in the picture. And I encourage you to play around with these settings. Perhaps I'll set this to a hundred thousand, and we'll see what happens when we uh, when we dial this um, 
the height and the width of our light box down from 10 I'll go back from 100 I'll go back to the default 10 and we'll see if we can detect an effect yeah look we can see that the shadows are much harsher now but we can also see that the brightness on her face hasn't actually changed but we can now see these shadows are fairly harsh here from the jacket and as I said, you know, do play around with them. Perhaps we'll set them to 50. And that means the shadows are a little bit softer, but 100 really is as if, uh, as if this is a, either a photographer's softbox or an outdoor um, shot in sort of half overcast conditions. One thing to be aware of, if you're adding these spotlights here, you must be, the NVIDIA iRay engine must be selected because if you don't do that, let me just switch over to all right, uh, let's, uh, yeah let's switch over to 3d light and that means of course this viewport is no longer valid so I'll set, I'll set that to texture shaded um, and with 3d light selected if you now create a new spotlight and perhaps uh, just apply this um, uh, camera one transform here if we look at the parameters for spotlight 3 all we get is shadow so we don't get to see, we don't we don't get to see what we've just seen in spotlight number 2 well, in fact actually all of them have changed now they've they've all these options that we've just set um, the uh, lumen, lumen settings and uh, the light box settings and all that are no longer there. Uh, sadly, if we now switch this over back to NVIDIA iRay, uh, those options don't necessarily come back for all lights. So they, they come back for the ones that we've set, but they don't come back for the ones that, uh, that we've added when the 3D light engine was selected. You see that you have intensity, a spread angle. So these things, they haven't actually changed. Whereas these ones, they've actually come back. There is a difference in how the light gets added to the scene, depending on what rendering engine is selected. I guess it's a bug. Perhaps I'll tell Daz about it. They probably know about it and they're busy fixing it. But yeah, it's just something to be aware of. If you happen to be in 3D light and then you add your spotlights and then you say, oh, I need to change to iRay, you need to re-add or your spotlights. The one thing I haven't demonstrated here is uh, if we've selected the NVIDIA iRay viewport and iRay has done this first render pass in the background and I now go ahead and do my real render, then look, see what happens. The rendering begins almost immediately and the iterations are happening and I get a result much quicker than uh, doing a cold render. So a hot render these days is um, it's just much faster than it used to be. So that's something very positive that they've, that they've changed in the engine. That was it. I hope you've enjoyed this little introduction to parametric lights in NVIDIA iRay in DAS Studio. Do play around with it, but the principle is uh, the same for any light that you set and do stick to spotlights and uh, leave the distant lights and the point lights alone for now on. In the next video, I'm going to introduce you to the IBL capabilities of iRay and how we can set accurate sunlight in our scenes. Mm -hmm.